Good evening and welcome to evening prayer for Monday, November the 9th. Today is the day the church commemorates the life of Martin Chemnitz, pastor and confessor. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let my prayer rise before you as incense, the lifting up of my hands as the evening sacrifice. The joyous light of glory of the immortal Father, heavenly, holy, blessed Jesus Christ, we have come to the setting of the sun and we look to the evening light. We sing to God the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. You are worthy of being praised with pure voices forever. O Son of God, O giver of life, the universe proclaims your glory. The Lord Almighty grant us a quiet night and peace at the last. Amen. It is good to give thanks to the Lord. Sing praise to your name, O Most High. To herald your love in the morning, your truth at the close of the day. Praise to you, O Christ. O come, let us worship him. Lord Jesus, stay with us, for the evening is at hand and the day is past. Be our constant companion on the way. Kindle our hearts and awaken hope among us, that we may recognize you as you are revealed in the scriptures and in the breaking of the bread. Grant this for your name's sake. Amen. Praise the Lord, for it is good to sing praises to our God. For it is pleasant, and a song of praise is fitting. The Lord builds up Jerusalem. He gathers the outcasts of Israel. He heals the brokenhearted and binds up their wounds. He determines the number of the stars. He gives to all of them their names. Great is our Lord and abundant in power. His understanding is beyond measure. The Lord lifts up the humble. He casts the wicked to the ground. Sing to the Lord with thanksgiving. Make melody to our God on the lyre. He covers the heavens with clouds. He prepares rain for the earth. He makes grass grow on the hills. He gives to the beasts their food, and to the young ravens that cry. His delight is not in the strength of the horse, nor his pleasure in the legs of a man, but the Lord takes pleasure in those who fear him, in those who hope in his steadfast love. New Testament reading tonight is from Matthew chapter 25. Jesus said, Then the kingdom of heaven will be like ten virgins who took their lamps and went to meet the bridegroom. Five of them were foolish, and five were wise. For when the foolish took their lamps, they took no oil with them. But the wise took flasks of oil with their lamps. As the bridegroom was delayed, they all became drowsy and slept. But at midnight there was a cry, Here comes the bridegroom, come out to meet him. Then all those virgins rose and trimmed their lamps. And the foolish said to the wise, Give us some of your oil, for our lamps are going out. But the wise answered, saying, Since there will not be enough for us and for you, go rather to the dealers and buy for yourself. And while they were going to buy, the bridegroom came, and those who were ready went in with them to the marriage feast, and the door was shut. Afterward the other virgins came also, saying, Lord, Lord, open to us. But he answered, Truly I say to you, I do not know you. Watch, therefore, for you know neither the day nor the hour. And about Martin Chemnitz, pastor and confessor. Aside from Martin Luther, Martin Chemnitz, 1522 to 1586 is regarded as the most important theologian in the history of the Lutheran Church. Chemnitz combined a penetrating intellect and an almost encyclopedic knowledge of Scripture and the Church Fathers, with a genuine love for the Church. When various doctrinal disagreements broke out after Luther's death in 1546, Chemnitz determined to give himself fully to the restoration of unity in the Lutheran Church. He became the leading spirit and principal author of the 1577 Book of Concord, which settled the doctrinal disputes on the basis of Scripture and largely succeeded in restoring unity among Lutherans. Chemnitz also authored the four-volume Examination of the Council of Trent, 1563 to 1573, in which he rigorously subjected the teachings of the Roman Catholic Council to the judgment of Scripture and the ancient Church Fathers. The examination became the definitive Lutheran answer to the Council of Trent, as well as a thorough exposition of the faith of the Augsburg Confession. A theologian and churchman, Chemnitz was truly a gift of God to the Church. And our devotion with Martin Luther tonight is based on Psalm 26, 5. I have hated the mob of evildoers and will not sit with wicked people. Loving and hating. We should have nothing to do with evildoers and wicked people. David said, I hate them with all my heart, Psalm 139.22. The author of Psalm 1 praises believers who avoid them, 
Blessed is the person who does not follow the advice of wicked people. Take the path of sinners. Excuse me. Ah. Blessed is the person who does not follow the advice of wicked people. Take the path of sinners or join the company of mockers. Psalm 1.1. If you spend too much time with false teachers, you will eventually share in their false doctrine, lies, and errors. If you play with tar, you're going to get dirty. But doesn't our Lord Jesus Christ command us to love our enemies in Matthew 5.44? So why does David brag that he hates the mob of evildoers and won't sit with wicked people? Doesn't a person do good things for them, and by doing so make them feel guilty and ashamed? Yes, we should hate them, but only in regard to their false teachings. Otherwise, we must be ready to serve our enemies so that we might be able to convert some of them. We need to love them as people, but hate what they teach. So we are forced to choose between hating them or hating God, who wants and commands us to cling to his word alone. Our hatred is a sacred animosity that flows from love. So love is subject to faith, and faith must be in charge of love. When the word of God is at stake, love ends and hate begins. But if only personal things are at stake, such as our property, honor, or body, we should show respect and serve others. God gives us these gifts to help others. We can risk them in order to serve. However, we cannot risk God's word because it belongs to the Lord our God. We join in the Apostles' Creed in the Lord's Prayer. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven, and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. O Lord, merciful and holy Bridegroom, we grieve the fall of your church. It is our fault that the beauty of your bride is no longer recognized. Therefore, we pray you, give and increase in us faith, love, and hope in you. Root out of us all sins and vice, all strife, all disbelief, all error and heresy. Rebuke the erring, convert the unbelievers. Bring the rebellious again to the unity of the Christian church, and show them the light of your truth. Protect our shepherd from all danger of body and soul. Bless all pastors and those who administer in the church and the building of your congregation. Grant them success in all things. Equip your whole church with the power and proof of the holy faith. Stand by your witnesses among the nations and further the course of your gospel in all the world. Fill all government with the fear of you and let their ruling serve to foster and preserve peace. Have mercy on our people and our country. Let the youth be brought up in discipline and in a right knowledge of you so that they may recognize your law and the way of your salvation. Give constancy and loyalty to all pious teachers. Comfort all the troubled and sorrowful. Impart health of body and soul to the sick. Grant to all pregnant women, according to your mercy, a happy result in their childbearing. To the needy, give bodily and spiritually, according to your good pleasure. Let those who travel be commended to the protection of your holy angels, and be a strong help to all who need you. For the sake of your holy wounds, O Jesus. Amen. Lord God, Heavenly Father, through the teaching of Martin Chemnitz, you prepare us for the coming of your Son to lead home his bride, the Church, that with all the company of the redeemed, we may finally enter into his eternal wedding feast, through the same Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Our short little Luther reading is about uh, Matthew 9:21 She said to herself, "If I touch his gar if I only touch his garment, I will be made well." Faith that heals. Her faith was so strong that she believed she could obtain help if only she could touch his garment. 
She did not deem it necessary to come to him with many words, present her complaint, and pray that he would have mercy on her and help her. Nor did others pray for her, but she sought only to reach him and touch him. For she thought if only she could do this, she would receive help. She neither doubted his power nor his willingness to help. Nor did her faith deceive her, for as soon as she touched the hem of his garment, the fountain of blood was stopped. Hence you may see what faith which clings to the person of Christ is and does, namely a heart that regards him as the Lord and Savior, the Son of God, through whom God reveals himself and bestows upon us his grace, assuring us that through him and for his sake he will hear and help us. I thank you, my Heavenly Father, through Jesus Christ, your dear Son, that you have graciously kept me this day, and I pray that you would forgive me all my sins where I have done wrong, and graciously keep me this night. For into your hands I commend myself, my body and soul and all things. Let your holy angel be with me, that the evil foe may have no power over me. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God.